So we have looked at how to draw certain interesting plots like histograms, scatter plots, to draw smoothing lines and so on and so on. We have looked at several geoms. Now very often we would like to add additional lines on top of existing plots to highlight certain important aspects of our plots. So that's what we're going to look at in this lecture. Okay, so here we are still taking our uh, the empty cars data, uh, data set and what we have done here is called ggplot with empty cars and map the x-axis to weight and the y-axis to miles per gallon which is the fuel efficiency and created a scatter plot. Okay, so plus g on point. Now the fact because we are assigning it to a variable the plot will actually not be drawn. Instead all the information about the plot or to create the plot is in this variable called p. Now the beauty is that p has got one layer right now but we can just string on additional layers to p just by using the plus sign. So we could do this we could say p plus geom v line that's a new geom we are introducing and of course as the name indicates geom v line will draw a vertical line okay and then the argument we are passing to it is x intercept equals 5 so what that's going to do of course this we are, this result is not being assigned to anything therefore it will be plotted and what it's going to do as expected is create a vertical line and a vertical line we need to tell the system where it will intercept the x-axis at and that's exactly what we have done by saying x-intercept equals 5 and therefore we've got a vertical line that's going through 5 on the x-axis. Okay, Of course there's nothing significant about 5, I just took it as an example to show you uh, how to draw a vertical line. Most likely we would end up drawing vertical lines at significant positions like you know what is the mean of the weight or what's the median of the weight or, or something like that. Okay, or we may draw a horizontal line with certain significance. Here I just used 5 as an example. Okay, now sometimes you may want to draw multiple lines. So in that case all you have to do is instead of passing one value just pass a vector. So this time you're going to get a plot with 5 vertical lines 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because that's what this is. 1 colon 5 is nothing but the vector 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and you get that. Okay, so it's not very difficult to draw vertical lines. All you have to do is to specify what the x-intercept is. Of course, you can color many uh, co uh, control many other aspects of it, like the color and the line type, and all of those things are uh, allowed. Okay, so here we are saying uh, geom x-intercept. This is the same plot. Okay, now the thing about uh, geom v line and of course geom h line, which we are going to see shortly is that these geoms do not inherit their data from any of the other calls. So for example, ggplot empty cars, we've already said that, and we were able to just say geom point, knowing that geom point will inherit the data from the ggplot call. Okay, so aesthetics, everything is uh, mapped in ggplot, and all of that is being inherited by geom point, but they will not be inherited by geom v line and h line. That's a very important point to note. Okay, so if we are going to refer to anything from the data set within v line and h line, then we have to name the data set again here. Okay, the data is not going to be inherited. That's the important point. Okay, so as of now, since we have not specified any data set for geom v line, this geom v line actually has a data set as null which is fine for this particular plot because all we are doing is drawing a fixed vertical line at 5. So again we consider the same scatter plot assign it to variable p so this statement itself doesn't print out anything and then we do a horizontal line this time using the geom h line as can be imagined and of course because it's a horizontal line it will have an intercept on the y axis and we are saying y intercept is 20 so we get this horizontal line nothing difficult about this this is just identical almost to what we looked at in the previous slide okay so here we are using another function called Abe line and the Abe line is a concept which was there in base R as well in base graphics 
and uh, in ggplot it's called geom Abe line okay and Abe line is created with a slope and an intercept okay the default slope is zero intercept is basically where this line is going to cut the y-axis that's the intercept and slope of course is how slanted it is or rise over run as we understand it okay so the default slope is 1 and the default intercept is 0 and therefore if you just do geom Abe line you should see the 45 degree line if both the axes are scaled identically okay but here we don't see the line isn't there supposed to be a 45 degree line here or at least depending on the scaling there should be a line which is fundamentally the 45 degree line but we don't see the line at all that is because if you look very closely at the axes you see that the origin of the axis here it's not really at 0 0 right I mean the the point here where the both the axes meet at least the both the displayed axes meet that is not 0 0 and you can see the y-axis is starting close to 10 and the x-axis is starting uh, you know little above 1 okay that is because uh, ggplot has created those things just to indicate the data based on the data there is no date there are no data points which are close to 0 0 so it has chosen not to show it of course we already know how to control that and get the complete axis if we want okay so this is just the default behavior of ggplot and therefore if you really saw the 45 degree line the line that starts at 0 0 and uh, you know uh, and rises uniformly on both the axes which is that if it gains one on the x then it also gains one on the y that line would be here right because the actual origin is somewhere here and the line will go from 0 0 to 5 5 okay so if it goes from 0 0 to 5 5 it, the line will look like this okay it's completely outside of the viewing region and that's why we're not seeing it this is where the line actually is if we extended the axis right so if I extend the axis and assume that 0 0 is actually here and uh, you know the, the y 5 is somewhere here on the y-axis 5 is here on the x-axis so the line will actually go from 0 0 to 5 5 and that's why the line is completely not visible at all on that plot now we can fix that by uh, indicating for example by extending the limits so for example I say you know make the y limits go from 0 to 35 okay so instead of going from 0 0 uh, from 10 to 35 it's now going from 0 to 35 and we are now able to see the line okay so so that's the whole idea of how this is how a b line works right so essentially we simulated what I had done in the previous uh, actually ideally speaking I should have also shown the x limits and then we would have seen the line actually starting at 0 0 we are not seeing the line starting at 0 0 because I did not uh, do x limits to start from 0 I could have done that and then you would have seen that as well okay in any case the previous slide shows us exactly what would have happened so that's how geom Abe line works so here again we show another example this time we are giving geom Abe line but with intercept equals 20 okay now the default intercept is 0 but if we change the intercept to 20 what we are actually doing is shifting the line up the slope is still 1 because we have not specified it and the default slope is 1 so the line is going to look like this now right see that it will intersect the x y axis at 20 now you may wonder why is it not intercepting the y axis at 20 it's in seeming to intercept the y axis at a little about 20 that's because the y axis is really not here it should be at x equals 0 so the real y-axis is somewhere here and if you extend this line down it will actually meet that y-axis at 20 okay so this kind of stuff is happening because of the fact that the x-axis is not starting at 0 okay uh, so here you're going to get a line that intercepts the actual y-axis at 20 and has a slope of 1 so here we are showing uh, a line uh, an Abe line which has an intercept at 37 and a slope of minus 5 this time the line will go downwards because the slope is negative so you're seeing that so once again the intercept is supposed to be at 37 it seems to be just a little bit above 30 but if you stretch the x-axis down here up to 0 and drew the line then you would see that it actually meets at 37 okay so in any case uh, we might not be drawing Abe lines 
as much but we would definitely be doing a horizontal geom h line and geom v line quite a bit when we want to annotate our graphs to highlight certain specific things okay so here we are doing uh, a plot where we are drawing the linear regression line so of course you know that whenever you want to draw those kinds of lines we use the geom smooth uh, geom which we've already used before except that we need to say method equals lm okay which means that otherwise it will be using method equals low s and it will show a curved line if you want the re linear regression line you say method equals lm interestingly you can put method equals lm you can either put the lm in quotes or you can just put it without quotes both of those approaches work and we said se equals false because in this case we did not want the the gray the confidence intervals around the line. Thus far we have looked at how to draw single lines on the plots or even multiple lines but drawing lines on single plots either one line or multiple lines. Now we'll take a look at how to extend this idea to facets. Okay so here what we are doing is just first plotting the scatter plot and, and doing a separate plot or doing a separate facet for every value of cylinder. Okay, so we've got four cylinders, six cylinders, eight cylinders, and we've got a scatter plot of uh, miles per gallon against weight. Okay, so uh, this time, for whatever reason, we've chosen to put miles per gallon on the x axis and weight on the y axis. Normally, we would have done it reverse, but I think the point here was just to illustrate the plotting and not so much the meaning of what we are trying to plot. Okay, so now the point is that we want to plot a horizontal line here for each value uh, basically at the mean weight right so for the mean weight of cars with four cylinders we want to show the line there mean weight of cars with uh, six cylinders we want to show the corresponding line and so on okay now we'll show one way of doing this now given that we have not looked at d plier yet once we have d plier we can do much better okay so for now we'll do something that's a little bit kludgy okay so we want to show the not show the mean weight show the mean weight for each fa facet via horizontal lines okay now this gets a little bit tricky and this goes back to the point that i made earlier that the geom h line geom v line and then geom a line do not inherit the data definitions that we've got in the higher levels which means that if we want to use any specific data in those geoms we have to define a separate data set just for those geoms Okay, so here we've got the same old scatter plot uh, and we've got it faceted, which is what we saw in the previous slide. Now, what we are doing is creating a separate data frame just for the geom v, uh, H line that we are going to draw. Okay, now notice that the main thing, uh, the main plot is faceted by cylinders. Now, we are going to have one line on each of the facets so definitely we need to have cylinders as a variable in the data frame we are creating for the geom v, uh, h line okay so we are creating a data frame in which the value for cylinders is four six eight and then we are putting the corresponding mean weights okay now this is where i said we are being a little kludgy because if we were using uh, you know d plier and so on we could have calculated the mean values easily okay these are supposedly the mean weights for uh, cars with these specific cylinders okay we we're just calculating the value and putting it here we would have to do it uh, in a better way than just putting in the actual numbers here we could have written expressions here that would have done the job okay anyway the important point is that we are creating a data frame with a column called cylinder which will correspond with the cylinder faceting so when this is faceted this this will also get faceted after we add the new layer and the mean weight is just another column that belongs only to this data frame now we say geom h line okay y intercept is m weight which is this and data equals mean weight that is this whole data frame is the data for this particular geom remember as I told you this doesn't inherit anything so if we had not set data equals something then this would have this layer would have had data as null okay so if you want any data specific things to happen in this layer then we have to specially create the data and that's what we have done here 
Okay. So now what will happen is, since this plot is faceted by cylinder, this resultant plot P plus G ohm H line is just an extension of this. So this is also going to be faceted by cylinder. And therefore, for a value of four cylinders, it's going to pick up the corresponding mean weight and draw the line here. For a value of six cylinders, the line here, eight cylinders line here. Okay, so again to recap what's going on, since geom H line does not inherit, or geom uh, H line in this case, does not inherit its data from anywhere, we need to specify the data. So that's why we had this. And this layers data therefore is the data frame mean weight that we just created here. And this layer gets its cylinder value and weight value from the mean weight thing, right? So the individual lines are being put in the appropriate positions in the corresponding facet. So this is a tricky thing to do and it is, uh, I think it uh, merits very careful examination to see how it's actually working.